things. How many looking forward to 2020? Again, as we mentioned, looking forward to 2020 and all God has in store for us. And so we want to cover some things tonight. Uh, in Proverbs 18, as we, we've been using as our main, um, one of our main springboards tonight, it's Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18 and verses 29. As you remember that scripture, he says, where there is no vision, but the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And so... Uh, we I was we we started off that way, again and thinking about our vision, when there is no vision concerning God, when the, we was referring even to the when the preacher loses sight of God, or when uh, the nation loses sight of God, all people perish. We have to keep our eyes on God, Amen. And so as a result of that, and we also uh, we can even liken it unto just in everyday living also. Where there's no vision, we perish. Again, you have to have goals, aspirations, as we've been covering des dreams and desires. And goals uh, uh, will, will never many times be accomplished if we don't go out and uh, uh, see it and believe it and enact as we've been covering. And, and goals will never happen if we don't do anything about it. Again, we can have all these great ideas in our minds, or even just in general in life or spiritually living but we have to also initiate, amen, but well, we have to walk by faith, amen, and live by faith, and also to initiate our faith, amen. Uh, God uh, will always, always has always given us a vision, always given visions throughout the word of God, and, and, or insights to what was going to take place or what was going to happen. And so, again, so we always see that God always gives us something to, to look to tonight. And so in Proverbs 18, Again, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So vision, again, no limits. No limits on it also. No limits, uh, um, uh, meaning the people perish where there's no vision. There's no limits. There's no direction. There's no direction. Uh, we're just grappling aimlessly. And mankind is grappling aimlessly, uh, uh, searching and looking through for life without God. And so we think about that. I, I heard even heard an illustration about, imagine those balloons that get blown up. They get blown up, right, and then you let it go. And that's how people live their lives. It just kind of goes scattered all over the place. But again, we keep our eyes on Jesus, amen, and it begins to allow us to have focus and moving towards or moving forward uh, towards the ultimate goal. And moving forward does require vision. Vision, again, uh, the plans uh, that we have and various things, and not only that, but to see it. Uh, and even today, we are here because of a vision. We even saw, even when coming before we even moved to New York, we saw again, as we said, God's got a church for us. God has a place for us. God has a people for us. Amen. And so you have to have a vision to foresee it even before it comes to pass. And so we, we already knew by faith that God would come through. So visualize the picture in your mind as we've been covering, picture in your mind and seeing it for yourself. And most importantly, according to God's will. According to God's will. It will be done. And so, again, your mind, your heart, and your soul, it has to be God's will. It has to be God's will for it to come to pass. And so, we talked about how people had visions throughout the Bible. And Peter, and before we get down to the main cross here, Peter walked on water. He had to see himself, what? Walking on water first, right? He had to see himself walking on water. Again, to visualize it, to see it come to pass. To visualize uh, seeing it for uh, again before it comes to pass. And when... Uh, some, seeing something beyond our capacity. When we see something beyond our capacity also, that may mean God has something involved in it, right? Right? To see beyond your capacity. To see it beyond your capacity. In other words, to say that is too big, that may mean God may be in it. Amen. In other words, beyond you, you can see that on and on we've been covering about uh, there's nothing impossible, nothing too hard for the Lord. When things were of nothing or things were uh, seem as impossible, again, when it was beyond their capacity, God always would always make a way. We just had to simply believe. Uh, I was sharing with you, uh, again, I'm still going to give you an acronym tonight, vision. Vision. I saw it earlier uh, a few months, uh, weeks ago, I guess, about vision, V I S I O in vision first letter was visualize visualize and so picture it in your mind as we cover picture it in your mind do you see it right do you see it do you see it and so we share with you again peter saw it he saw it he envisioned it again jesus no doubt sees a lost and dying world but he sees men and women coming to christ over and over again seeing great things come to pass and we'll cover some of this in the letter i stands for initial internalize 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 right internalized him it makes it uh, applicable to you 
make it applicable to you. Become a part of it. Putting yourself in the picture. I will tell you many times when I was reading the Bible and, and how that, again, uh, sometimes it may not even be. Uh, we went to conferences or whatever. Uh, the pastor was dealing with preachers and dealing with everything. I wanted to make it applicable to me. Uh, you read, your, you read the word of God. It's not just applicable for somebody else. Let, put yourself in it. It's for you. Amen. Those things are for you, and so you internalize it. You see it come to pass. I see me walking on it. I see me. I see that mountain moving out of the way, right? I see healing. I see it happening in my own personal life. And so you begin to internalize it. And so seeing it, the, uh, seeing yourself in it, seeing it come to pass, let it become a part of you to visualize it and now become a part of you. And the letter S was what? To strategize, strategize. Is that a good one? Strategy. Amen. Strategy. You think about it. Taking time to walk through him. Write it down. Remember that scripture. We uh, again, we must have a plan in that scripture about how the God said, uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, when we go to build a tower, we go to build a tower. We must what count the cost first. There had to be a strategy for him. So many times as the ladies were talking the other day, again, in preparing, and one of the ladies asked, we're going to have a prayer breakfast again this year. And so I say, yeah, we, we can. And so we begin to strategize even now. I said, y'all need to get a calendar. It was neat to see the little committee. I said, man, it's a little four-woman committee coming together. <laughs> and they were back there strategy, strategizing. All right, again, for this, uh, we was, he was saying, well, when can we do it? Uh, again, perhaps in May, the month of May or June. Again, when there's a gap in there. So, so they begin to strategize. I said, we're going to get a calendar and begin to write all these different things down. And so begin to make a strategy. And even the strategy for reaching the laws, strategize and see things come to pass. And in your life, step by step by step, uh, by this time, uh, by this, uh, by month number one of January 2020, perhaps we can have uh, 20 new visitors. Amen. Right? Uh, again, uh, 20 new people saved. Right? Amen. The strategy and say, you know what? I'm determined to see, uh, again, at least once a week, I'll bring someone to the house of the Lord. And so we strategy, strategize it, play it out in your mind. Again, uh, I would say that even the devil has a strategy also. Devil has strategy also. And so, you know, one of his strategies, he has three, he has a three part strategy to steal, kill, and destroy. To steal, kill, and destroy. And so that's really his strategy. You think about it as a, as, uh, again, you put yourself in the, in, the, in the seat of a child and how initially his strategy is to steal what? Their innocence. To steal their innocence. To steal, again, from them. And steal their, uh, many times kids are exposed to various things. That's the man talked about the other day. He said at the age of five he was exposed to pornography. And so from that point on, his life was all messed up in his head. And so we begin to see how, again, the enemy, he wants to steal your innocence or put you in a situation or, or, or steal your innocence from this. And so the devil will steal that from a, a young person or steal that from you. Then I even think about sometimes when, when we invite families to church, invite kids or, or people to church, and the kids are involved, they get so excited. Oh, church. Oh, yeah, can we go? Can we go? And, I, and, I, and many times, again, you hoping and walking away, the praying, and the parent will come. But uh, many times, the parent will kill that zeal of that child wanting to come to church. And so we see again uh, the innocence of the joy of wanting to come to service, the joy of wanting to learn about God. And so the enemy's strategy is to steal that away. You know, so from that point on, he'll he'll kill it. He'll kill that desire when they get old enough. That kill he'll kill that desire to know about Jesus. How many know what I'm talking about? There's a strategy that the devil has. There's a strategy to kill it. The killers can kill even your desire to serve God. Your desire, he'll, uh, again, a dream or aspiration that we have. And even in life, no doubt. Again, and so uh, he, uh, the devil has a strategy to kill that thing. And so we have to continue to keep that thing alive. Amen. The strategy, continue to keep that fire burning. Keep your, your zeal for the Lord going. And so his desire to kill. And the last piece of his strategy is to destroy. Ultimately, to wipe it out. Amen. To where it never sees it come to pass to where you ultimately lose your soul amen from that so the innocency of that child wanting to come to the innocent again in world where he begins to die away and desire once they become teenagers oh man it's tough <laughs> and so no doubt we see it how uh, there are various things going on i, I remember a young lady uh remember a young girl got baptized and so i uh, talked to her now and she's kind of cold because <laughs> she's getting older and various things, and so again, a lot of that was killed by her environment. Various things that we know, we have a lot of things we don't have control over because she's not growing up in a Christian home, and so it happens a lot. Amen. 
Let me see. And so uh, back to that again, again, strategy, strategy, step by step. Uh, Proverbs, you can turn with Proverbs 14, 15. I'm just kind of going through this and you can just take notes. Proverbs 14, 15 tells us here, uh, he says, God will begin to, uh, every prudent man dealing with knowledge. And he refers to about the strategy we have about how God orders our steps. Like, I'm in the wrong verse, chapter. There it is. The simple believeth everywhere, and the prudent man looketh well on his going. So, again, prudence, prudence, prudence about it, being diligent about it also, as we're going to all go into here and again. But uh, step by step, being prudent about it also, being prudent about it. Um, and oftentimes we wanted to fall from the sky. We wanted to fall from the sky, right? And again, let it happen. Voila, just like that. But again, we have to begin to see that sometimes it takes steps. It takes time. We think about Noah. When he was uh, about to build our God showed him he's going and the flood was going to come. Uh, again, uh, and it, but it took 100 years for it to happen. So again, but step by step, he had to visualize. He had to see it in his mind before he even built the ark. And then he strategized it. He, he, he played it all out. He said, we're going to get the wood from this region. We're going to go from there. And we're going to do it step by step. And through this, and no doubt even Moses and Joshua, various ones, uh, again, had strategies walking around the walls of Jericho. They had to follow the steps. Nehemiah had a, we covered a few months ago about Nehemiah, how he, what, he envisioned it. He had a mind to work. He envisioned seeing the wall built back up. And through strategy, man, it came to pass. And Solomon building the temple, only don't know there prime examples of again taking strategy and going on with it again uh, anything worth having took strategy the letter i so again let's go back to it uh visualize it initiate it what's the letter uh strategy now we're going to initiate initiate right initiate to actually not just talk about it but we say what be about it hey man i'm just talking about it guys we covered it a sunday night about god is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him god is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and so again we want to be diligent about it diligent about it coming and seeking after it chasing after it and so he is a rewarder of those that actually go out and get it we preached a month a few minutes ago about stay hungry stay up stay poor hungry and stay hungry or stay poor hungry Poor, hungry, and driven. Poor, hungry, and driven. And so, we begin to think about how we initiate it. You begin to have to make it happen. We can stay hungry on the side of the road, but we have to get up and do something about it. Amen. Get up and make something happen. So, that's one of the hardest things to actually go out and step out there and do it. To step out there and really initiate it and make it happen. Taking that first step. It's oftentimes the hardest one. Amen. On those first few steps. Even in business, they talk about how to, again, it's some of the hardest years. I have to have a, be told what to do in everything. But the hand of vision begin to uh, bear rule. In other words, they take charge and begin to make things happen again today. So let's be go-getters. Amen. Go-getters, go-getters, go-getters. Initiate things. The go-getters for God. Again, you say, I want more money. Well, you got to do something to initiate that. <laughs> right? You got to initiate. I want more money in 2020. Well, do something to initiate it. You got to go out there and try something. Do something. Learn something. Uh, go to school. Uh, go out there and make it happen. Amen. Go go, go to work. Again, uh, you want uh, that job offer won't come unless you apply. Or it may be an offer, but if you won't, it won't mean anything until you apply. And so we have to begin to initiate it. And so, again, we think about this over time. And the, the letter O, the letter O. So initiate, uh, the letter O in vision is uh, overcome also, overcome. In John 16, John 16, the Bible says we will have tribulation. We will have tribulation. He says, but, and, but we, we were able to overcome these things. We were able to go through things. We were able, we were going to suffer things through life. And some of the things when we initiate, say, ah, I'm starting this thing, I'm going to walk out. But the key is you have to overcome it also. As you're in the middle of it, to begin to overcome it. And so, again, anything worth having, as we always say, is what? It's going to take a struggle. It's going to take a little bit. So we have to be willing to push through the difficult times. Uh, but God thought God said it was going to be this way. Yeah. But again, he says you have to go through things also. Again, uh, again, going up the mountain is not a smooth ride up the mountain. Right? It's not a smooth, smooth ride. Sometimes the money may be tight or whatever, but you have to overcome that. Uh, again, attacks of the enemy. You have to, uh, to overcome that. He was in valleys in life. But what you have to do? You have to overcome it. As you begin to pursue that vision, things will begin to come our way. We have to do that. Again, a man was sharing about how that, again, uh, in, in flight, he was learning how to fly. And, uh, and 
Really, if you ever flown before, there are no smooth flights. I mean, I'm talking. <laughs> There's always going to be some tribulation, a uh, turbulence, say eh? turbulence, and uh, things are going, and, and it's a part of life and a part of the journey. And, and, and but we, the challenge is, is not to quit, not to quit in it all. And so he was referring to this turbulence, and again, he the first time he felt turbulence flying, he began to really he got afraid. He said, "I don't know if I want to do this no more." I remember I never felt turbulence. Until going to Germany, and that turbulence was the whole trip. <laughs> Them wings were like they were gonna fall off the plane, uh, James. <laughs> pocket after pocket after pocket, and it was tough trying to get to the destination. But it took turbulence, and, and I like what the man said. He says, "Turbulence is potholes in the sky." <laughs> Think about this, potholes in the sky. We will face potholes. You may face a rough ride sometimes, but you have to continue to overcome every challenge that we go through and keep our eyes towards the ultimate destination, right? Towards the ultimate destination. And even in that, even in that, he said also in flight school, they turn the engine off. They turn the engine off. Can you imagine that? Been in the middle of the air. And they turned the engine up. And, and, uh, uh, and so he says, but they had to learn how to navigate with the engine off. With the engine off. And so uh, you think about it, how they, as they navigate, the, the, the instructor would turn the engine off and they had to learn to navigate without the instruments and various things. So we sometimes have to navigate when we don't feel anything. When things don't seem like it's working, we have to navigate through it all. Amen. And so we look at that tonight. And so, and even we learn from the clo the closer we get to our destination, the closer we get to envisioning and, and the vision that come to pass. No doubt, we also see that it will get bumpier sometime, many times. Think about Jesus. We try to wrap this up. Think about Jesus near the near the resurrection, near the time of his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. It got tough on him. It got really tough. It got so tough to where he was ready to quit. He was ready to quit. Remember the time he went to Gethsemane and he prayed. He prayed, says, Father, let this cup pass from me. He prayed. He prayed and said, God, uh, no doubt he realized what he came to do. He came to give his life. But as he got closer to that time, it got tougher and tougher and tougher. Mm -hmm. And no doubt sometimes, again, when we get closer to something, we get close to something, it could be, again, getting tougher. But we have to stay the course. He had to get his eyes back on the Father. Remember that was the first thing out of his mind? He says, Father, he says, not my will, but thine be done. He said, let this cup pass with me. He said, but not my will, thine be done. And he pushed through. He kept his eyes on the ultimate goal of seeing the saved uh, reach for Christ. Amen. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. We wrap this up tonight. I'm going to let you guys go. We're going to be on time tonight. Amen. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. And, and, and the Apostle Paul he he, uh, he he had a, a word here concerning the, the calling to priest, concerning the, the call of God, concerning the things of God. And I'll have you look at it here, 916. He says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. He said, for necessity is laid upon me, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And so that letter in, you wonder what the letter in was? The letter in was necessity. Necessity. We got to see it as necessity. Right? I got to have this. We got to have it. Again, when, when a person has a vision for something, again, back to any realm of your life, whether it was that degree, or whether it was that job, or whether it was that girl, right? Or whether it was that man, or whether it was that, or that home, or whether it's, again, seeing the church, no doubt, growing, it has to be necessity. That is our ultimate goal. And so he said, my necessity is to see and preach the word of God, to see the lost reach, to see uh, many women saying that was Jesus' necessity also. And so the vision, we have to see the need for it. That necessity to see it come to pass, it has to come to pass. Uh, out of, we have to be doing it out of necessity, right? We, we sow it out of necessity. Somebody needs to be saved, right? We preach and teach out of necessity. This church door is open tonight because out of necessity, somebody can hear the word of God. Amen. So, again, the vision, again, out of necessity, I, I need a better job. Or whatever case may be, I'm going to school, why? Out of necessity, so I can get paid more money. Or whatever case may be, again, it's necessary to see it happening. A burden for something, you have to feel that it's necessary. Again, we don't care about nothing. If we don't care about something, uh, it'll soon fade away. I mean, I'm talking about mm -hmm. So necessity, necessity, necessity. So he says, I must preach the gospel. 
and to act for necessity is laid upon me, laid upon me a passion and necessity for to do something. And so rise and build, as we said, Nehemiah said, let us rise and build. And then Hebrews 20, 10, 26, we'll close with this. Hebrews 10, 26, Hebrews 10, 26, uh, necessity, necessity of being here tonight. The Bible talks about how he says, for Satan, not to similar of ourselves together as a matter of some is. He will not say, uh, he said, for we see the day approaching. We see the day approaching. And, and back to vision again, we see the day approaching. It's needful for us to be here. It's good for us to be here. Mm -hmm. It's good for us to be in the house of the Lord. It's good for us to worship God. We see the necessity. We see the necessity again of souls losing, dying every day. The young lady uh, just got news. She died. And she's still young. Uh, in her 40s, probably at that. And so we begin to see, again, the necessity for it. Every day, people are dying. Dying every day. And so let's continue to the church be a, a being and women. The importance of, of seeing men and women uh, be saved. We see. The Bible says we see it, the day approaching. We see the day of judgment. As we covered in Bible study a few weeks ago, even from Bible school, no smart school, said what? Catch a vision of hell. Catch a vision of hell and see. Can you imagine the souls is dying, losing it? So the hell and enlarged itself, the Bible says. And the light's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every day. But God, and men and women are just dumping down into heaven. Men and women are going to heaven also. Hey Amen. And so the vice versa, the same, I don't know now they, they, that are going to heaven. We pray that again, they can be the same about going to heaven. Amen. We can make our part of where we can do our part to say, God, let's pull more away from the fire. Pull more away and, and let that be our desire. Again, see that there's a need. Our world needs Jesus. Our world needs the Lord. And so let's catch that vision, the necessity to see souls saved. So he says, as we see the day approaching. And so we continue to have confidence in God. And it goes on and says, let's cast out our confidence away. You go back and read the latter part of chapter 10 of Hebrews. Uh, he says, don't cast away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. Keep your vision on God. Keep your eyes on God. And again, you have confidence in that vision. Confidence in what God is doing. Confidence in again seeing, again, it come to pass. Seeing the doors open. Seeing that mountain move. Have confidence that you'll be healed. See, have confidence that you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Have confidence that your loved ones can be saved. I mean, you're going to be tonight. Mm -hmm. Have confidence that there's a better day coming. And so we have confidence in God. And so back to we go close again. Vision begins the visualizing. Again, it says to internalize it, internalize it, internalize it, and become a part of us, strategize it, and also initiate it, put it to practice, put it to practice. Again, faith without works is dead. So faith without works is dead. I, I fell asleep there in there, but faith without works is dead. Again, we want to be more than just talking. Let's be about it. Amen. And so, uh, uh, always for overcoming, as we uh, step by step out there and do it, overcoming the obstacles, and then the end, seeing the need and necessitating it. Amen. I'm going to try to get a little printout for that and put it up on the board. All right? So we can kind of see it better. All right? Mm -hmm. God bless our prayer. We'll see you again Thursday night and continue to promote promote our 24th Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve services on the 31st. We have a great time in the Lord. Again, let's, let's, let's envisualize seeing a house full of people coming to celebrate again the end of the year and the, and the real reason for the season, the reason for our season. Let's him come to give his life. God bless our prayer. Amen. Reverend, if you dismiss us.